There are millions of smallholder farmers in Tanzania and all throughout Africa. They put food on the tables and in the markets. They help to feed our future. Their products bring in millions of dollars in foreign exchange. They are the silent drivers of the country's economic development, the unsung heroes. However, most of these heroes are poor despite all their hard work. They are not able to maximize on the potential of their land as they cannot afford improved varieties and inputs such as fertilizers and herbicides. They lack business skills and access to good markets, among others. Climate change is also making the situation worse. The International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IITA, an international non-profit making organization, is searching for the solutions to these challenges so as to improve the income and livelihoods of smallholder farmers and to tackle hunger, malnutrition and poverty in Africa through scientific research. ITA is a stand for the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture. It was created in 67. And the only mission is really to fight poverty through agricultural research. Uh, there is no way Africa is going uh, to make progress without addressing key issue of uh, agricultural production and productivity, which is uh, the lowest in the world. And uh, for Africa to do that, that uh, means uh, in real term uh, increasing yield of major crops by 60%. With its headquarters in Ibadan, Nigeria, IITA works all over sub-Saharan Africa, operating through its four major hubs, Western, Eastern, Southern and Central Africa. Tanzania is the headquarters for its operations in East Africa. Uh, I just started operating in Tanzania about uh, uh, 20 years ago as a small project. Then its activity expanded to become a big regional hub. Uh, since two th about 2005, we are working here with partners from the Ministry of Agriculture, universities, the private sector and non-governmental organization to address major problems related to the development of the agriculture sector in this country. As a regional hub, IITA Tanzania is serving eight countries in the region with a population of about 250 million people. Nearly half of them are poor, earning less than $1.25 a day. Furthermore, most of the poor are smallholder farmers. And there are reasons why we are targeting this uh, component of the population. Uh, they represent the majority of the population in a rural area. And we know in Africa that poverty is the highest in a rural area. Then we will be able really to reduce poverty and to generate the needed income for the country to develop. IITA researchers and their national and international partners are working tirelessly to increase the yield of major crops grown by smallholder farmers in the country. These include protecting them from deadly pests and diseases. Bananas are incredibly important for, as a staple food and also to generate income for many people. For example, in the Great Lakes region, 70 million people are dependent on bananas. Banana productivity is constrained by several factors, including water availability, nutrient availability, but currently one of the major constraints is a disease. And this disease is caused by a bacterium, and the disease is called banana xanthomonas wilt. It was first found in Uganda and eastern Congo and has since spread across the region, and it is currently present in northwest Tanzania. We at IITA have developed systems to link countries together to share information on where the disease is and to share information on how to control it once it's diagnosed. Cassava is an important food security crop for millions of smallholder farmers in sub-Saharan Africa. Currently its production is greatly threatened by two viral diseases that IITA scientists and partners have declared war on. These are cassava brown streak disease and cassava mosaic disease. Cassava is probably the most important um, food crop in Africa. Um, in terms of the total amount of produce produced, fresh produce, um, it's more than even a, a big crop like maize. Unfortunately, it's not just important to us. It's also um, a source of food for a lot of pests and diseases. So my research is really trying to wage war against these pests and diseases that are fighting with us to, to compete for this crop. So, 
We're doing research, trying to understand them. So what are they? Where do they occur? What different types are there? What strains, different species? How do they spread? Um, how then can we use this information to control them? One of the most sustainable ways to control pests and diseases and increase the production of any crop is to give farmers improved varieties that are resistant to the diseases. This is one of the areas IITA has had considerable success in the country. There are several, several success stories. And because we have collaborated with the IITA in terms of uh, exchange of genetic material, and some of them have been ev evaluated in Tanzania with the collaboration with the IITA, and we have released most of the variety of grain legumes, roots and tubers, in, especially cassava the, and, and others. They have uh, produced significant, uh, and, uh, significant changes on the farmer's field. From 2007, IITA and partners' efforts have led to the release of 18 improved cassava varieties that are high yielding and resistant or tolerant to the diseases. I develop new cassava varieties and uh, mainly is to tackle major problems of diseases and pests. We work with the farmers in what we call participatory variety selection. So we bring in farmers on station first to select the varieties that they want. So by doing that, when we reach on farm, these varieties already have acceptable uh, traits that farmers want. Nilipoanza kuzigundua zile mbegu za ITA na kuzipanda. Nilianza kidogo tu kwa sababu nikawa nimezizalana. When I started to know about IITA varieties and to grow them, I started small as I was not sure about them, but their results were good. That small plot that I had planted them gave me so much cassava more than even a half acre land of the other cassava varieties we were growing. So I was again very motivated to grow cassava, and now I want to grow more and more of these IITA varieties. And if I can be supported, if we can be supported, we can now grow hectares and hectares of cassava using these IITA varieties. So we need these varieties to be distributed in our village. One of the ways that cassava diseases are spreading is through the exchange of infected planting material. IITA and partners are putting in place a system to produce and distribute clean cassava seeds to halt the spread of these diseases. We have been working with uh, IITA is trying to develop cassava seed system systems in Tanzania so that to be able to deliver clean and virus free planting material to stakeholders. IITA and partners are working to control the excessive and inappropriate use of pesticides by smallholder farmers as they try to control pests and diseases, but which poses a great risk to their lives, the lives of their customers and the environment. Another key crop that we work on is vegetables. Uh, vegetables usually are cropped intensively in what we call peri-urban areas on the outsides of towns to produce perishable uh, products that are easily transported to the urban centre. Tomatoes being a key one, um, uh, but all sorts of vegetables, of course. But when they're planted and cropped in an intensive manner, uh, this exaggerates all pests and diseases in general, uh, but particularly the ones in the soil because they're more difficult to control. Farmers spray more and more pesticides um, in order to counteract what they see, but the real cause is actually under the ground. So it's my job to see if we can actually um, manage that problem uh, make the plants healthier through having better, healthier root systems so they don't become as diseased and they produce more, better, and the farmers do not use as many pesticides, so everybody wins, basically. Crops sometimes get contaminated while in the field and while in storage, making them unsafe for human consumption. Some of the contaminants that IITA scientists are tackling are mycotoxins, deadly poisonous chemicals produced by fungi which cause serious health problems to human beings and livestock. We at IATA are studying ways to control mycotoxins. Myco means fungus, toxin means poison. So what we're dealing with here are chemicals that are poisonous, that are produced by fungi, that contaminate food and feedstuffs. The solution we've developed with a range of partners is to use types of a fungus uh, cousins of the toxin producers, but these fungi that we use don't produce the toxin and they push out the toxin-forming cousins. 
making the food and feed that is then produced safe for human and animal consumption and also enables us to realise trade opportunities because the contamination levels are below accepted threshold levels. Researchers at IITA are also addressing post-harvest losses and lack of markets to ensure farmers actually benefit from their increased yield. Uh, one of the things that we do at IITA is to, uh, value addition. And for value addition, we uh, increase opportunities for farmers to uh, use technologies that will increase the value of their crops in the market. Uh, because we have technologies for uh, reducing pests and diseases of uh, the uh, mandate crops that we work on, we also uh, have technologies for increasing productivity of, of the crops. So when farmers use these technologies and they get higher uh, um, yields, uh, we don't stop there. We help them to convert uh, this uh, harvest to uh, more storable uh, products that they can sell to uh, markets uh, where they, they get uh, more income. ya mwaka 2003 tukapata huu mradi wa usindikaji wa muogo kwa kutumia From the year 2003 we got this project of modern processing of cassava using machines. The project was funded by CFC through IITA. So up to now we can say we have been continuing well. Tunaendelea vizuri. Because looking at our lives, lives of our group members and even the environment of the processing center. For example, this building you can see, we have constructed it using the profits we made from processing. And we have bought a vehicle for the center and processing machines, all due to processing. We also have built small retail shops in our village, and we are educating our children well from primary up to secondary school. All these are the benefits of our processing work. IITA recognized the importance of capacity building in strengthening research in the country and has organized hundreds of short-term trainings to improve the skills of its partners and provided internship opportunities and long-term trainings for postgraduate students at the MSc or PhD levels. I'm being assisted or supported by IITA for technical assistance in the field and also in the laboratory analysis. So I'm using the IITA laboratory for my research study. IITA, first of all, have added value at our research, first of all in terms of capacity building, because, uh, because you start with making your researchers capacitated to be able to perform uh, research excellence. So IITA has done just that, because even myself, I'm a product of, in one way or another, of IITA, because my PhD research, I did it at uh, IITA in Ibadan. To boost its research activities in the country and region, IITA has constructed a modern science building in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. The building with its five well-equipped laboratories can accommodate up to 70 researchers and is open to partners from other research institutions, both national and international, and local and international universities. Uh, for IITA, we do train uh, students and so this uh, laboratory provides the opportunity to develop the capacity of um, young scientists in Tanzania and in the region. Um, it gives us the opportunity to also work with our colleagues in the national program. The science building was inaugurated by His Excellency Dr. Chukaya Mwishu Kikwete, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, in a colourful ceremony on the 13th of May 2013. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me express my optimism that Africa is, is likely to succeed in her quest to transform her agriculture and thereby attain food security, poverty reduction, and prosperity for its people. 
positive signs are emerging for all of us to see. We should therefore build on the momentum and strengthen our collaboration with all stakeholders towards that end, including the wonderful work done by the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture. It was also attended by many dignitaries from the region and beyond, including former president of Nigeria and IITA's goodwill ambassador, Chief Olushigan Abasanjo. IITA Tanzania, with the science building complete, will continue to redouble its efforts to support smallholder farmers to gain from the fruits of their labor and live a better life as they feed the country and contribute to building its economy.